Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Scavenger. Welcome back. It's been about a week since my last upload, if you've been paying attention. But, uh, you know, we're back and we're going to play more Chasing Sunsets. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Hi, George. Sarah Forrester. Sarah, it's been a while. I was just thinking about you the other day. Oh, that's sweet, George. How's your family? Family's great. Andrea's been hunting me to invite you and the boy to dinner. Oh, we would love to, though I confess this isn't entirely a social call. Great timing. I was just reviewing your portfolio last week. We haven't talked about it since the divorce. You're well diversified, but we never set any goals beyond your son's college. That's what I wanted to talk about. George, I'm at something of a crossroads. I also need your counsel on the no-compete clause in my contract. I'll need to tread very carefully here. Well, come in tomorrow morning and we'll talk about it. Whatever crossroads you're at, you'll be relieved to know that you're in good shape no matter which way you go. You know, Walter, I've thought about fate a lot recently. How one moment in time evolves into a life-changing event. I think it's called the butterfly effect. Like a chance coffee day turning into a multi-billion dollar enterprise. That's not exactly what I was thinking about, but yeah. Okay, your bedroom, Boston, 16 years ago. Oh, okay, all right. Psst, Alex, are you awake? His TV was on just a few minutes ago. Wait, is, is she talking right now or is she just in thought? Hey, Sleepy, I know a secret. I went shopping with Daddy today. He went to a jewelry store. You're going to be my brother. I think she's just, I think this is all inner monologue, or like inner thought, I think. So, she knows that their parents are going to get married. And I already love you. Oh, isn't that sweet? Oh, I think she loves him more than just like brother and sister. Was he awake? Let's find out. Yeah, he was. What? <laughs> Alex, you still with me, son? Hmm? Uh, oh, sorry. My mind went someplace else for a minute. Someplace warm and tropical by the look of your face. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, that came later. Anyway, James proposed to Mom that day. They got married on Tonalu Island in the Pacific the following winter. And that's where the story I promise you really begins. Okay. All right. Chasing sunsets. We're just now getting into the, uh, the meat and potatoes of the game. <laughs> okay. Oh, Halloran's Pub, Boston, present day. All right, we're back here. I've heard blending a family is difficult, but it came easy for us. Are we getting to the part where you tell me what went wrong? Oh, jeez, Walter, patience. At first, my sister and I were inseparable. We walked to school together every day. No, in the original 1977 movie, Han Solo shot Greedo before he had a chance to pull out his blaster. Lucas tried to whitewash him in the remakes. He was always better as an anti-hero. Uh, throw her a bone, challenge her opinion. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I honestly don't really have an opinion on it. I guess Han Solo was a pretty shady character before he joined the Rebellion. If he really did shoot first, it would sort of fit. I say it makes for a better story, because there's actual character growth. The best stories are always about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Mind alone. But still, I feel like he was just as strong a character without murder on his resume. I didn't even know how much I needed a father figure, but James stepped up in a big way. Oh, somebody's knocking on the door. Hey, Alex, uh, time to learn how to use the lawnmower. But Mom pays someone to do that. Well, now we can pay you to do it. Oh, wait, now I have to earn my allowance? <laughs> You'll never learn the value of money if you don't. Come on, it'll be fun. Then, the Incredible Race will be on TV. Mowing the yard doesn't sound like fun. 
James, no one at school even thinks we're rich. We live in this boring old house, and I have to do chores. What's the point of money if all we do is save it? Hmm, you may not understand now, but someday you will. Money can buy happiness, Alex. What other people think you have will never be as important as the kind of person they think you are. But money can buy Call of Duty 2, and that comes out tomorrow. That would make me happy. <laughs> oh, now you have motivation to mow the lawn. Let's do this, and then you can buy it for yourself. <sighs> I guess. I'll be right out. Dad. You know, money can also buy a snowboard. Which would also make me happy. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that after we've had a look at your report card. For now, maybe we can get you signed up for that parkour class at Subtotal Fitness. Really? Okay. Uh, uh, parkour class, huh? Do they have those? Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what they got these days, man. As luck would have it, a sick day is what first came between Jay and I. Finally, now we're getting somewhere. Get up, Alex. You'll be late for school. Uh, I tried, Mom, but I told you I don't feel good. And this has nothing to do with the fact that Call of Duty 2 came out yesterday, right? Why don't you believe me, Mom? Mother's intuition. Convenient timing. Not my first day on the mommy job. Should I keep going? I've got more. No, but I'm really sick this time. Really sick. Mr. Thermometer doesn't lie. I'm not sure the same can be said about you. Hmm, you don't feel feverish to me. Open up. You old thing. <laughs> I'm going to get your sister ready for school. Leave that under your tongue. I'll be back in one minute. Mr. Thermometer, meet Mr. Lamp. There we go. I heard the beep. Mr. Thermometer never lies, huh? You slip the thermometer back into your tongue just as Sarah returns. Hmm, maybe you are running a little hot. Told you. Uh, okay, here's the deal. You can stay home today, but no video games. Understand? Yes, Mom. All right, we're at Campbell home, Boston, several hours later. <laughs> He's obviously playing games. That's how it works. We all know. We all know the tricks. Oh, wait, I heard a door slam. Oh, crap, someone's home. Better turn off the TV to see who it is. Hmm, there's voices outside. That's Jay. Because he was sick today, Jenna. I'm just saying. It's strange that you spend so much time with him. Wasn't it fun today? Just us girls? Sure, I guess. What's your problem with Alex anyway? You never talk about my brother like this. Because you don't follow him around like a lost puppy. I don't follow Alex around like a lost puppy. Is that really what people think? Hmm. You just don't see it, but everyone else does. People say that you're a weird new girl crushing on her stepbrother. Oh, leave her alone. Nobody says that. You just haven't heard it because you don't have the right friends. She's never going to fit in if she doesn't ditch her loser brother. Whoa, whoa, jeez. Mm, Jenna's a spoiled bitch, but she's popular. This is Jay's first year here, after all. I already have a bunch of friends, but she only has Tara. Maybe Jenna's right. Jay can't make friends if I'm always in the way. You feel a flash of jealousy, hurt, and anger. Then it's gone, replaced by a quiet resolve. I know what I have to do. All right, later that evening. Everyone runs faster with a knife. Try hitting me. Hey, Alex, what you playing? Call of Duty 2, contemporary battle. Oh, let's team up. Uh, I was just finishing up. Dad asked me to do some chores anyway. You go ahead. But, Alex? The next morning. Mom, have you seen Alex? Oh, yes, honey. He left for school a few minutes ago. He was supposed to wait for me. I thought he did, sweetie. You two always walk to school together. He did it last night, too. I think Alex is mad at me for something. Did you ask him what about? I tried to, but he just makes excuses to leave. 
study and I will have a talk with him at bedtime to see what's going on. How does that sound? I guess. I just don't know what I did wrong. All right, after school. Hey, buddy. How did you feel at school today? Oh, I was a lot better, but Mom still has me on bed rest. Proven. Let's see some parkour moves, buddy. Watch this. <laughs> You're a natural. I can't wait to do that class. What class, honey? James, uh, uh, Dad said I could sign up for parkour class at the fitness center. Hmm, it's Dad now. I said maybe, <laughs> if you stay on top of your grades, champ. Oh, I will. Say, Alex, Jay is pretty upset you left for school without her this morning. Is there something going on between you two? Well, no. Hmm. It's stupid. I promise you won't be mad? And we promise we'll listen. So, why don't you tell us what's going on? I overheard Jenna telling Jay that she wouldn't make any friends. Kids say some mean things at times. Sticks and stones. Why did you let Jenna get under your skin? Jenna says it's because she follows me around like a puppy. At first I was pissed. Language. Angry. But I think she might be kind of right. I don't want Jay to get picked on. I'm just giving her some space so she can make some other friends. That's very mature thinking for a boy your age. She's certainly been spending a lot of time with you. Still, this doesn't feel like the right way to change that. Alex is putting up a brave front, but I can see he's hurting. I don't like this either. But I also feel you're both missing out on not cultivating other friendships. I don't want to hurt her feelings. She just needs a little push. We'll talk to her, but this isn't your problem to fix. I'm not even sure there is a problem to begin with. And Alex, be careful not to push too hard. We'd hate to see anything come between you two. It's been heartwarming to watch you two connect the way you have. I won't, Mom. <sighs> I take it that's how our expression means James' instincts were right. Yeah, Jay was furious when she found out what I was doing. This might be the one time Mom and Dad miscalculated. How so? Jay took it as personal betrayal. That's when I really learned how competitive she can be. Did you try talking to her? Of course. <laughs> you know how it is. Whether you talk about her or not, it's a mistake. Sounds an awful lot like you're describing marriage, son. <laughs> yeah, well, she never walked to school with me again. That seems pretty extreme for avoiding her a couple times. Well, it was never about avoiding her. She'd have forgiven me for just about anything, except for cutting her out of decisions that affect her, apparently. Still sounds like we're talking about marriage. <laughs> well, as misguided as I was, and worked, she did make a bunch of new friends. When Jay doing other things, my focus changed as well. I gave up video games, mostly. I love parkour class, got pretty good at it, too. Then James convinced me to try youth football. I used to watch the video clips of your games with James. We thought you'd go pro at one point. Dad wanted me to be the next Julius Edelson. I enjoyed football, but it was never going to be my passion. I had the agility, but not the speed or size to go pro. Training, son. You'd have gotten there. You had that fire in your belly. I guess we'll never know. But to answer your original question, I always got mixed signals from Jay. She'd give me the cold shoulder at home, yet show up for all my games. Like, religiously, rain or shine. Even mom and dad had to miss an occasional game. When I was at football camp, she'd feed my fish without being asked. On her birthday, she always left a nice gift on my bed. You better have left one on hers, too. <laughs> oh, give me some credit, Walter. I'm not stupid. Moving on. Our antagonism was hardest on mom and dad. They felt like they'd messed up on a good thing. Or at least didn't stop me from messing up a good thing. To be honest, all this sounds like she blew it way out of proportion. Well, like I said, I was far from perfect. All right, so we're going to go back to the Campbell home 11 years uh, in the past, but we're going to do that in another video. So I hope you guys like this one. If you did, you know what to do, as always. Smack the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. 
I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Scared.